Hey guys, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're well aware that General Motors is going to fit the new C8 Corvette with a DCT, or dual clutch transmission. So what is this DCT? How does it work? Is it any good? And is it the best transmission for the new Corvette? And are there any downsides to a DCT? Well, stay tuned and I'll give you a quick rundown on how a DCT works and I'll tell you why I believe that the DCT is the best transmission for the new C8 Corvette. Okay, before we get into my presentation, I'm going to show you a quick video that was put out by GM to introduce us all to the DCT. After that, we'll get right into my presentation. The dual clutch transmission offers something a conventional manual transmission can't offer. A continuous transmission of torque and power to the wheel. This offers ultra fast and precise shifts that happen in less than 100 milliseconds. An uninterrupted acceleration. A unique feature of this transmission can actually keep 100% of the torque applied during the shift. This transmission is lightning quick. It's a type of transmission worthy of this car. Our goal is combining the driving engagement of a manual with the speed and smoothness of an automatic. The dual clutch transmission, or DCT, is a kind of a mix of a manual transmission and an automatic transmission. It's like a manual transmission in that it has the same configuration of meshing gears and a clutch, or in this case two clutches. The only way it really resembles an auto transmission is that a computer control attends to the operation of the clutches and gear shifting duties so the driver can choose to drive the car without any attention to gear changes, just like an automatic. Now let's start by considering the DCT is like having two manual transmissions in the car. One transmission for the odd number gears and one for the even number gears. Transmission number one starts the car in first gear, then we use transmission two for the second gear, then back to transmission one for third gear, and so on. Each transmission has its own clutch, so when we start the car in first gear with transmission one, we close or couple the clutch, the same as letting out the clutch in a manual transmission car, and we launch the car. Transmission two has already pre-selected second gear, but its clutch is decoupled, so there's no drive through transmission two. When the time comes to shift to second gear, the clutch for transmission one is declutched to cease driving first gear. But simultaneously the clutch is coupled for transmission two and the engine starts driving through second gear. Transmission one now pre-selects third gear, ready for the next shift. As you can imagine, if you had to work two clutches and two shift levers manually, you'd be all arms and legs, and I suggest you'd need an extra one of each to do it. But thanks to modern technology, there's no need for you to do anything but steer the car. And unlike a manual transmission, you can keep your foot down on the go pedal during the shift. Then just like an automatic transmission, the car's computers monitor the car's speed, RPM, throttle position and the like to compute what gear is required next, and then make the shifts automatically. Just like many automatic transmissions, the C8 steering wheel is fitted with paddles to up and down shift the transmission manually if the driver chooses to. Now let's move on a bit. We don't actually have two separate transmissions in the car. They get combined into one. The input shaft, coupled to the engine, drives the two clutch housings, which are one inside the other. Each has its own output shaft, again one inside the other. This gives two paths for the engine power to flow through a complicated arrangement of gears, effectively creating two transmissions inside one housing with a single input from the engine and a single output drive to the differential. Now let's look at what's good and what's potentially bad about the DCT. If you're driving a manual transmission car, to change gears you press in the clutch to decouple the engine from the transmission. This allows you to change gears smoothly before you let out the clutch again to recouple the engine with the transmission, and only then 
to start driving the rear wheels. During the time the clutch is in, there's no drive to the rear wheels, so the car actually slows for the duration of the shift. In fact, if the shift takes half a second, the car travels over 8 metres without power to the rear wheels at 60 kilometres per hour. Or if we talk miles per hour, the car will travel 44 feet without power at 60 miles an hour. This obviously slows the car's acceleration time. But with the DCT, the shift is not only lightning fast, but the drive to the rear wheels is continuous during the shift. So the acceleration is also continuous, and the car accelerates faster overall. And compared to an automatic transmission, the DCT doesn't have the slip through the torque converter that's associated with the auto prior to lockup. This means we don't lose energy through heat creation in the converter, and the car operates more efficiently. So not only will there be more energy available to accelerate the car with the DCT, but it will also be more fuel efficient. And finally, let's look at the potential downsides to the DCT. Firstly, there's the issue of pre-selection of gears by the non-coupled transmission. If the car's accelerating, the non-coupled transmission will have pre-selected the next highest gear in readiness for the upshift. If the driver suddenly lifts off the throttle and wants to downshift for a corner, for example, the waiting transmission will be in the wrong gear. There'll be a slight delay in the downshift while the waiting transmission changes to the correct lower gear. How noticeable this will be is unknown for the Corvette C8's DCT, and we won't find out until the journalists have their first drive. I'm betting the problem won't be too noticeable. Secondly, I was seeing a potential problem with the launchability of the C8. With a manual transmission, a hard launch can be made by holding down the clutch while enough revs are brought up to put the engine right into the best torque range. And this can vary depending on things like the road or surface and the tyres being used. It isn't the same with the DCT as the clutch is computer controlled. I figured the quick 0 to 60 times were possible with the very low first gear the C8 engineers have regularly mentioned, getting the engine quickly into the right torque range. But I did wonder if the GM engineers had something up their sleeves. And they sure did. It's come out recently that the C8 has a launch mode where you can feed in some relevant settings, hold the brake down hard with your left foot and floor the accelerator with your right. The engine revs settle on 3,500 RPM and you release the brake for a clean and fast launch. There's also a free revving and burnout mode possible by holding back both steering wheel paddles which opens the two clutches. How cool is all that? Again, great thinking by the C8 engineering and product team. Motor Trend magazine has been testing a C8, in particular the launch control and burnout modes. Watch out for their report when it comes out. OK, let's briefly sum this up. The DCT is as good a transmission as you can get for a performance car. It shifts in a fraction of a second, and it's constant drive which means there's a constant application of torque through the transmission right through the shift. You also flat shift the car, meaning you're fully on the accelerator during an upshift. That's as close as you can get to a clutchless sequential racing gearbox, which is totally unsuitable for a road car. You can drive it like an auto, or you can shift it manually via the paddles. And although you can't declutch it with a foot pedal, you can use the paddles to, de to declutch, which lets you free rev the engine and even do burnouts. The launch mode gives you the ability to do great launches, which you can tune into the tyre and tarmac conditions. So what more do you need? And I've been thinking about the potential pre-selection delay I discussed earlier. I've decided it will most likely be as quick as I can downshift my SS Commodore's six-speed Tremec, and also as quick as a downshift in the auto trans of my C6. In fact, the lightning fast shifts the Corvette engineers talk about are really only needed for upshifts during hard acceleration anyway. So I think the DCT is great for the C8, and I can hardly wait to drive one. Anyway, that's it for this video. As usual, I'd be really pleased if you liked the video and you give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, you should also hit the free subscribe button. 
Now's a good time to do it. You should also be able to see a couple of more of my videos up at the top of the screen, which you can click on to watch them right now. So until next time, happy vetting, and I look forward to you watching my next video real soon.